and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with my husband Jason Hi. and we're going to do a Q&A video for you guys. I asked you a while back if you had any questions for us and some of you sent in some questions and so we're going to do we that are. today. We're here in Golden Gate Park and we want you guys to just join us as we on a little stroll. Walk and talk. Talk. <laughs> Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you haven't already. Ring those bells! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright guys, so I have some of your questions here. Let's go ahead and start out with Stargazer 90's question. She said, how did you meet and how did you know Jason was the one? Whoa! Yes. He was playing a show at a little shop here in San Francisco called the Parish Trust. I went with one of my friends yep. who was a mutual friend of Jason mm -hmm. and he introduced us and we had about a 15 minute long conversation and while I was talking to him my spirit literally jumped up in my chest because something was different and I just felt so full of hope. Mm. I think my spirit could just feel that I was supposed to have this connection with this guy, like long term, but my brain wasn't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I thought you were super hot, and I was like, oh, she's still talking to me, that's cool. <laughs> and then he's like, all right, well, I gotta go. Five minutes later, I see him up on stage playing guitar, and I'm like, oh no, he's a musician. <laughs> oh, been there, done that. And it totally changed my perspective of him. Hmm. I know. And then her friends, unfortunately. Tainted. Yeah. Even more. My they said I was a ladies' man. I was a player. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They said he was a player. And she was hating the player. She I hated like, the player. If this guy thinks he's going to woo me, then he's got another thing coming. Yeah, right. So we texted for the next like three months, but I told him he was really weird and <laughs> <laughs> his ego was hurt. She did. Um, I was aww. funny. That's funny. So See? yeah, so that's how we met and we actually didn't hang out, hang out until six months after mm -hmm. our initial meeting. At that point, he was living in San Francisco. I was living in Auburn, California. You texted me out of the blue. Yeah, because I saw that on your Instagram you had gone to a swimming hall. Yeah, I posted a bikini pic. Nice. Bikini. <laughs> and then he hit me up. Yeah. And it was like, Slid into your hey. DMs. <laughs> hey, I've got some questions about your film photography. And by the way, like, do you want to show me a swimming hole? <laughs> and I was like. I need to get out of the city. I need to get in the mountains. Yeah. And so then I said, okay, this is weird. This guy's coming all the way from San Francisco, wants to hang out. I was like really praying about it because I had gotten so screwed just by guys and I was just so over that and so I didn't want this guy to come all the way out to visit me and then like think that we're just gonna like mess around and have a good time because like I wasn't into that yeah <laughs> you, thought, you thought we were gonna maybe make oh, out oh yeah so anyways I basically heard God say Erica you think that the most important thing about a guy is what's in his heart right and I said yeah and then he said well how do you expect to ever know what's in a guy's heart if you don't give him a chance? It's true. And that's like one of those times where you're like, God says something unexpected that you weren't, <laughs> mm. you were caught off guard and I just knew he was right. So I said, okay, Jason, let's hang out. And then literally 24 hours after hanging out with you, I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to marry this oh, guy. Oh yeah, that was great. <laughs> I was all in. I'm like, I'm, I'm not moving to LA anymore. I'm moving to Sacramento. Yeah. yeah. You that's were planning cool. on moving to LA and then you just changed up and changed your plans. Oh yeah, that's great. But best, I think best change of plans ever. The moment that I knew he was the best friend I had always wanted was when on our first day hanging out, we went to the Yuba River and we sang Subterranean Homesick Blues by Bob Dylan together. We knew every word, each of us. And I was shocked. I was like, this is the best friend I've always wanted. Like he's <laughs> singing this Bob Dylan song with me. That's so that was kind of like the moment for me mm. that I was just so happy inside. Yeah. It felt like I found my soulmate. I think that was my moment too. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. And then, um, same day, just a little story. He asked me if he could kiss me and I said, no, I'm trying to do things differently than I normally do them. So mm -hmm. you can't kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, well, I'm also trying to do things differently. 
than I normally do them. I usually don't ask a girl if I could kiss her. That's true. But I think that maybe the fact that I wasn't so easy was what maintained the mystery for you. That's true. Yeah. And that's why you stuck around. Gave me I that think. carrot, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta dangle that carrot. <laughs> dangle that carrot a bit. All right. So next question. Laura Hahn said, "What's your engagement story? How old were you both when you got engaged?" So we dated from June until December. Oh yeah. Like six months. So very short, yeah. short dating period. And then he proposed around December 12th. Yeah. So I was 29, he was 27. We had a pretty short engagement. It was from December until August. Yeah. August 27th, 2016, that's when we got married. <laughs> One of Erica's favorite artists is Andy Goldsworthy, is that his name? Yeah, Andy Goldsworthy. He does art with objects found in nature, like bark and... Rocks and leaves yeah. and trees. And, and then he has an installation. He has a couple in San Francisco, and one of them is uh, called Lover's Lane. And it's this lane in the Presidio in San Francisco. And traditionally, they called it Lover, Lover's Lane because when all the, like, the Navy sailors came home, they would walk up that lane to go see their wives. And um, I had told her that we were gonna go take pictures for our families for gifts. For Christmas. For Christmas. So we drove into San Francisco, like spent the night with a friend. Um, I got my buddy who's a photographer to shoot the, the photos. And as we were shooting, I got down on one knee and proposed to her. Yeah. But I think you knew. I was on to him <laughs> the whole time. Next question, what qualities did you learn about each other after the wedding day that you love about each other? I think one of the things I love the most is like our ability to bounce back after fighting. Mm -hmm. We're both very playful and whenever we can like wrestle or like I just start hitting you him. You love wrestling. Like, I love you it. You love physical contact. I'm like, I need to get my aggression out because you're really pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just start hitting him with pillows and then he'll start laughing and then like we just start wrestling yeah. and the next thing you know, like we're kind of like over whatever it is we we're fighting yeah. about. So that's one of my favorite things. What about you? Qualities that I love about you. I knew that you were before we had, when we had been dating and engaged, but uh, you're such a hard worker. I mean, multiple times I've been in between jobs and you've been the only one to help us along. And um, even like last night, just staying up late, like working on YouTube channel and, and all that stuff that like, you're really, really driven. And I really, I really love that about you and appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. I would say um, besides the whole wrestling thing, <laughs> What I really appreciate about Jason is his positivity. It's like relentless. And he's wow. like so cheery and joyful. He's like the most joyful person I've ever met in my life. Like I will get mad at him for singing. <laughs> I'll be like, babe, I'm trying to sleep. Like you're so loud and inconsiderate. And he's just like in the kitchen, just like singing songs and just like so happy and joyful. And I, might get annoyed sometimes, but I honestly like that's like one of my favorite qualities about him. Yeah. Moving along, um, we have a question from Alexis. How do you support each other's passions and how do you help each other pursue those dreams? What do you think, babe? I would say the main thing that comes to mind is just how, for one, like you said, I was working when you didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. I was like supporting you going back to school and starting over in your career. Yeah on a new career path. And then when it came time for me to quit my job as a florist or when I, yeah, when you I You were switched, forced to. <laughs> when I kind of had to for stress reasons. You know, he had a job at that point and was really supportive of me quitting and doing my YouTube full time. So that was awesome. So that's what came to mind for mm -hmm. me. I think like with Erica, it has been like three years or majority of our time together with me trying to figure out like what my career would be like. So for her, she had to kind of hunker down and just be that breadwinner for us. Um, and so for me, it's really fun in supporting her and like talking about like, how can we grow your channel and how can you do more videos? and. Um, you know, I, I think recently she actually just brought on a couple of people to help edit her videos and now she has more time to create content. And, and I, I wouldn't have done that without you yeah. pushing me to. Yeah. He's an idea machine, so he's so good at like just coming up with ideas and like he's just like really business savvy. Thanks, and babe. I feel like some of our most enjoyable conversations are like brainstorming yeah. for 
like our different business ideas and yeah Jason like he has his passions you have always been musical yeah yeah so like even when but, I didn't have a job and we were living in Sacramento I was still pursuing music and I would still drive down to mm -hmm. Berkeley you know once a week to practice with yeah. my band and that was a lot Erica still supported me in doing that and yeah. So, and even though things are slowing down with your band right now, mm -hmm. which by the way is called Before the Brave, if you want to look them up, <laughs> things are slowing down with his band, but I feel like for the most part, like your other passions, like surfing. Oh yeah. But I'm always encouraging you to go surfing because I know that when Jason does the things that he loves to do, he's happier and our relationship is better. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So our next question, when is Tiny Acorn due? Do you have baby names yet? Oh, the tiniest of acorns? Nice. August 24th is the due date. But we're trying to bake it a little longer to get it extra crispy, you know what I mean? <laughs> we we want to wait till September for... Yeah, our anniversary is on the 27th of August, so... <laughs> that is sacred? Yes. We don't want to have a child with a birthday on the same day. Mm -hmm. And baby names, uh, we have a lot of... Girl names. Girl names picked out, but... We're struggling with boy names right now, yeah. and we won't find out for four more weeks or so what the sex is. So, so next question. Fro K said, "Are you guys spiritual? What do you practice, if anything? What are your beliefs about God?" Hmm. Um, well, we both come from Christian backgrounds. Mine was definitely more charismatic, more like out there. Holding snakes. No. Speaking in tongues. Yeah, but um, I like value that so much and I think that it was like perfect for my personality type because I'm definitely more of a mystic. I'm an Enneagram 4 so like everything is has like spiritual meaning to me. So I feel a little apprehensive like sometimes saying that I'm a Christian because there's so many different types of Christians in the world just like there are so many different nationalities and I definitely think that I don't fit into a lot of the boxes that many people put Christians in? I think um, like the way that we approach God is um, we believe that there is a God who loves us, who um, has shown himself to physically like come after us and pursue us. Um, but also like I think our mind expands to a little farther like you know there may come a time where things that we might believe or have thought in this life might be wrong. Yeah. Um, and we're okay with that because we know that, that God or the creator or whatever is a lot bigger than we are um, and we choose yeah. to to kind of su uh, subscribe to that belief system in Christianity because it makes sense to us um, yeah. and we feel the most connected to that narrative of how the world was created and that narrative of salvation. Um, that's kind of just like our theology about God in general is that it's this like very benevolent loving family that we're all a part of like we're all children of God no matter like what you believe like you are still a child of God and um, so that's a little different than some people believe we like to remain like very open and err on the side of God being too loving and too gracious and too generous and too merciful rather than the side of like God just can't wait to throw people into hell and be judgmental and stuff like that and uh, and wants you to just behave better. We're anyways, we're like very very like heart oriented with our belief about God and for us it's more about like what's in your heart. And so I think that that's kind of where we rest with all of that stuff and um, we're also very like open to, you know, whatever beliefs that you have and understanding that you know by no means do we have it all dialed in um, and there's things that we can learn from everyone no matter what religion they are and what beliefs they are too mm. so yeah yeah one of our last questions is from Sophie Russell she wants to know the timeline of our jobs and our hobbies and whatnot timeline yeah what so I would just say like I've had such a wide array of jobs <laughs> throughout my life from sure. working at a yogurt shop to working with teenagers in a crisis center and doing lots of inner healing teaching and facilitating workshops with them. Um, I've also sold wine. Um, I did go to school for fashion design at Sac State. What? And I never really did anything with that degree in the fashion world. 
Um, I did have an Etsy store where I sold vintage for a number of years, like six years or something. Right before I started doing my YouTube full time, I was a florist. <laughs> now I'm doing YouTube full time. Yeah. Okay, babe, what's yes. yours? My job journey. Um, I worked at Costco, <laughs> I worked at the Apple store, I worked at the macaroni grill, I was a janitor for my dad. Um, I think like my first like career job was I was a music ministry leader at a church here in San Francisco. And then I was a worship leader. And then got super burnt out and then became a, a Lyft driver and an Uber driver and a yeah. waiter. That's when I was waiting tables when I met Erica. Um, and then I like worked my way into sales. I was doing coffee sales and I owned my own online business selling roof racks and cargo boxes. Yes. <laughs> um, and that all led me to kind of UX user experience design and uh, product design, which I'm doing now. So um, I was fortunately fired from a job that allowed me to stay here in San Francisco and collect unemployment and at the same time go to a user experience design boot camp called General Assembly here. Um, yeah, and from that, I was able to get a job. So I'm head of a web and creative department here in San Francisco uh, for a small startup. Um, so I also do web design on the side and do like some SEO and like ad stuff. So that's kind of like the journey I've been on and it's yeah. ever changing and growing and yeah. I feel like we're the happiest that we've ever been in our careers like right now. Yeah, like the most settled in understanding yeah. what we want to do. And I am 34 right now and Jason is 32. Yep. So that's just to give you an idea. We've been married three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So um, for hobbies, I've had so many hobbies over my lifetime. A lot of them involve using my hands. Sewing, crocheting, collaging. Um, I was into film photography and developing my own photos that's for true. a long time. I play guitar a little bit, although, you know, when I met Jason, he was such a good guitar player, I felt like, well, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to try anymore. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I'd love to do that more with him, like mm -hmm. play guitar and stuff. I don't have a very good singing voice, but yeah, he does. Do. So It's cute. <laughs> it's super artsy fartsy. So, but um, also I love doing puzzles and... That's probably her favorite pastime. Just like, I feel like my YouTube is my hobby. That's Collecting true. vintage clothing, like treasure hunting. So that's really great that I can combine my, my work and my hobby. Yeah. And so for me, my hobbies, um, I do like to play video games, but I think the probably healthiest hobbies for me is like, I do enjoy running. I do enjoy going on hikes. I like to go surfing, even though I'm not very good at it, um, but I'm learning. Um, anything like working with my hands out in nature, I really, really enjoy. Yeah, I think we love being outside whenever we can. He likes cooking a lot. Oh yeah, I like bake, I'm baking bread. bread. Yeah, I made bread today. He makes really good sourdough bread, mm -hmm. and it's awesome. Yes, we're gonna eat some when we get home, yeah. for sure. So our last question that we have time for is from Lorian Patmore. She asked our favorite kind of music and music genre. Mm. I think for me, like 1960s and 70s, even into some of the 80s, music was just spot on, it's great. Mm. I don't know, I mean, I think lately I've really been into this guy, Leif Volbeck. Mm -hmm. He's been great. Like anything kind of like indie, folky, yeah. um, that kind of stuff is like, right up my alley. Um, we appreciate lots. Like our wedding playlist was all like Rolling Stones. I walked down the aisle to Nico, Bob Dylan. But we also like current bands. Like I love Daywave, Phoebe Bridgers. We love the war on drugs. It was the like National, one of the best Tyco. shows. Yeah. yeah. Wilco. You're all about what's his, what's his face? Oh, Kurt Vile. Kurt Vile yeah. is like second to Bob Dylan. Yeah. He's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, so that's the kind of music we like, and unfortunately I can't play any of it on any of my YouTube videos <laughs> because it is copyrighted. Hey guys, so I just wanted to say that I know I didn't get to some of your questions, and the questions that I wasn't able to get to, I recorded on a separate IGTV video. So head over to my IGTV, at Tiny Acorn, and you can see the rest of the Q&A video there. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for just supporting us on this journey. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and please subscribe. Do it, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> All right, bye. Just oh. do it.
Oh, yeah. You're, You're beautiful, beautiful just, just the way, way you are. are. <laughs> Bye. Bye.